Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33, and well, it's been a week since the last tournament. Normally, as I mentioned before, I don't do it on the Wednesday, so there wasn't anything on Wednesday, but now it's Saturday, so we're back to casting matches because that's what I like to do. I like to cast matches. I do this because it's fun. Of course, there's really no other motivation at this point for me to do this, so that really stands to reason. Anyhow, we're going to have a match between Aquanim and Dorkiak on Sands of Time. So speaking of the tournament, this is a map that was actually played in the tournament, which I'll go briefly. So this map we had was a 2v2 tournament, so the game is going to be a bit different from that. In the doubles tournament, we had people start, a team starting out along here and then along here. So a bit more central than we see today, see in this particular match. And it was very raider focused. I mean, the hills kind of make sense. You really would only want to use cloaky bots. It is cloaky pathable. You don't have to worry about making spiders for everything. You can just use regular bots. And as you can see, Aquanim and Dorkiak are both going for shields and cloaky, respectively. So they both know that. They're they're fine with that. They know exactly what's up. And other than that, we have everything is plus two point one metal. So fairly straightforward. Everything is pretty simple. That's plus 2.1, and that's across the map. Very evenly spread. No real points of contention. It's just grabbing. Okay, there are subtle points of contention in the way that the choke points are laid out and the way the high ground is laid out, but nothing obvious. No, no clear clusters. Very spread. So, with that said, without further ado, let us get to the game. Looks like an Aquanim going for Shield Blood Factory. Looks like they're probably going to go for Dirtbag Scout first, and indeed they do. One Dirtbag followed by a couple bandits, probably into Economy. There's the Convicts, and Dorkiak with the Cloaky Bot into five Glaives, being very aggressive early on, opening with five Glaives. Want to get some real damage dealt before they start to go to anything else. On the other hand, Aquanim is... Well, they're scouting out a bit. They have a couple bandits. That's really only good for scouting. Maybe a bit of a light peripheral rating. Dorkiak with the five glaives, that they want to be aggressive. They better be aggressive. If they're not aggressive, they are going to fall behind very far. Because, like I said, this map, no little clusters. Everything's fairly evenly spread. So you want to get a couple workers pretty early on. Send them off in a couple different directions. Even if you get raided, you're still going to be pretty good. Because it'll raid one side and the other side's still building up. However, Aquanim is the only one really focusing on economy at the moment. Dorkiak just now getting their Conjurer up. Their commander has only taken a couple metal extractors, so Aquanim way ahead. Aquanim a bit weaker in the power infrastructure, but Dorkiak honestly overbuilding power at the moment. Granted, it is wind, and the wind generators are, of course, unreliable. But still, at this point, they're working really well, so they are overbuilding power. And they're trying to get overdrive, that's the thing. Focusing in the overdrive grid, and get back to that as... Dorkiak is moving out. They managed to get rid of both bandits. Both of Aquanim's bandits have gone down. That's one down, and that's the other one. Both corpses. They should be building up more by now. And yeah, there's one more, two more being... Actually, three having on the third one just built up. So Dorkiak is going to have a very tough time continuing into Aquanim's base. They are basically not going to be able to do so. If they go along the north side, if they call this... But no, they are not. They're going straight into Aquanim's base. They're going to run right into this defender. They're going to run right into the bandits. If, is Dorkiak going to respond to this? I don't see Dorkiak respond. No, Dorkiak is not responding to this at all. Dorkiak's glaives are complete. What is Dorkiak even looking at? Oh, main base. Yeah, that's not going super well. And ironically, they didn't even get the overdrive. Going for the overdrive, Lincoln didn't quite manage, unfortunately. But yeah, that's the thing is, that's a lot of power. And... Aquanim is really expanding quickly. They're taking advantage of the geometry of the map. They're taking advantage. They actually haven't even taken that strong advantage of it. They've only just built the second convict. They're moving out with their commander, naturally, but they're not really moving out with anything else. Whereas Dorkiak, they have their main base. They have their overdrive. Decent amount of overdrive, too. I mean, these are nearly doubling their metal extractor values. So they're keeping up with overdrive. The only problem is that only lasts for so long. Once that second convict comes up and we see that's already up, as that comes up and starts to get the overdrive grid for Aquanim, or starts to expand out in Aquanim's commander as well, and Aquanim is expanding slowly. I think they realize that Dorkiak... I don't know if they realize Dorkiak is expanding slowly. They do have a dirtbag over by this metal extractor, so they know Dorkiak is not expanding over the south side of the map. They don't know about the west side of the map, but they're calling it perfectly, because they want to make sure... like Dorkiak is being more defensive than they are economic, which means they can expand, yes, but I think what they're thinking is that Dorkiak is being kind of defensive but building up 
and they're not exactly right, but it's still something I could see possibly happening. So they're, I mean, they're taking advantage of the fact that they don't have to expand that quickly. So yeah, they can expand to contain, or they can safely expand because they have plenty of time to do so. Dorkiak isn't building up enough that they're going to, although admittedly right now Dorkiak is ahead thanks to Overdrive. But Dorkiak is not building quickly enough that Aquanim really has to worry about having to, having to out-expand right now. So instead, they're making sure that this is just going to be... They're going to have their Metal Lake Striders up, they're going to have defenses up. Light defenses, but still, they're defending decently well. They're not expanding naked. They could, but I think what they're thinking is, later on in the game, it might bite them. And they just want to make sure that they aren't expanding naked if they don't have to. And really, they don't have to. Like, it would help, in a sense, but it would... Honestly, this just makes it harder for Dorkiak to get back. I mean, Aquanim playing it very safe, and I agree with that. Because Dorkia could very easily burst out of this. They can be building up a large army and trying to rush out. I've had that happen to me before, where I just got overconfident about having someone contained. But you gotta be careful about that. You can't be overconfident, otherwise you'll end up getting hit. You'll end up getting burned. And Aquanim trying to avoid that, although Aquanim as well is not building a huge army right now. Dorkiak isn't building much of anything other than... Actually, Dorkiak is accessing. Dorkiak really needs to build more... Build much more stuff here. I am surprised they are just now expanding, though. Okay, Dorkiak finally moving out to expand. And Aquanim getting rid of the Glaives. That's easy kill, thanks to the hills. The hills just do it all. You oh, That's the thing with this map. Because there's so many hills, and hills are so great for running up, Obsidian is the same way. If you run up the hills when you're being attacked, your units... In common, part of it is the fact that Retreat Micro helps, but then you're going slower. Mostly it's that there's a lot more room to dodge, because now they're trying to fire into a plane rather than a line, because you're on the hill. Your units can go up and down as well as... Or rather, no, forward and backward as well as to the sides. And going forward and backward actually helps for dodging. So there's more, there's more room to dodge. Also, why all the characters dork You only have plus 20 metal. Even with the overdrive, I don't see the point of this many caretakers. I mean, I see they are building up the pylons. They're probably going to build up a second pylon. Oh yeah, there it is. There's a second pylon right there. Which I don't know. Does that even have the range? Double check. I think it does. Oh, it does. Yeah, just barely. Yeah, it will, it will connect. This metal extractor will be built up. But right now, Aquanim has twice the army. They have a huge amount of the map. They are spread everywhere. The only downside right now is they are spread. They aren't really unified in one area, but they are... They're fine. Aquanim has not much to worry about when it comes to building up. And Dorkiak relying probably way too much on Overdrive. Overdrive is great when you are kind of falling behind and you need something to keep yourself alive. But when you're already in a really safe and solid position, or you can be, especially at the beginning of the game, focusing on Overdrive is seeding territory. You're seeding all of this territory to your opponent. And that just means your opponent gets everything to work from. I mean, Aquanim hasn't even taken most of it. They really could have taken the entire map by this point if they weren't, I guess, afraid of a counterattack or letting constructors idle. Still, they pretty much have the entire map. They could easily take it, and if they had, they honestly could have built a silencer by now if they wanted to, just to be cheeky. Another thing I've done before, actually. That, that was kind of fun. But instead, going for the air switch and probably just going to go for a standard setup, standard Raven. Oh, Vulture. No, they want to know what's going on. Kind of makes sense. If we see on their point of view right now, they they don't have a huge amount... I mean, they have a decent amount of vision because of their units around the map, but radar, because of the hills, is not the best tool. It has a lot of weaknesses now. And it looks like Akinem going to go to try to kill Dorkiak's commander. Are they going to succeed? I don't think they're even going to try. And I kind of agree with that. It's a level 1 support commander with beam laser. Yeah, they that'd be way too risky. Not worth trying... Good scouting, though. Make sure that they know what's going on with the defensive lines. But they're really going to be getting most of that from the Vulture. Once that's done, and now it's done, so that Vulture is going to be able to help out. And now we have... Okay, this is more than enough bands to kill the commander. Six wasn't, but ten most certainly is. And Dorkiak's commander goes down. That was... A bit of a pain. That's actually a huge blow. Dorkiak going from 20 metal to 14... Or 18 metal to 14 metal. And right now they don't have... Oh, we can't even see the overdrive anymore when that happens. Yeah, Dorkiak in a really bad spot right now. Oh, maybe it happens because I'm doing this, and then... Nope, okay. I don't know. 
my guess is it's a weird interaction between hiding vision. If I were to see see Dorkiak's point of view, let's take advantage of this to see Dorkiak's point of view. Dorkiak sees not much at all. They have gone for gunships, they have gone for banshees. And yes, that's exactly right. It is when you reduce when you eliminate the vision. That's the problem. Hooray! Bug found! I might be able to fix it later. Yeah, when you lose vision of something, you don't get the overdrive circles when the vision comes back. Anyway, that aside, Aquanim is... Well, they're going to take a bit of damage. This is what I meant by they would want to defend, because a burst out like this against a naked expansion could be damaging, but then again, Aquanim does have a massive economic... well, economic and military lead. So at this point, I don't see much concern. Going for an Athena as well, just to build up gremlins, because they don't have any... I guess they want gremlins instead. They don't have the Cloakybot factory, so they'll use that. And unfortunately, Dorkiak is running straight into them. Why? Why, Dorkiak, are you attacking them directly? That is not the right move. Bunch of nearly dead Banshees trying to take care of the last of the power infrastructure, and they go down instead, feeding metal directly to Aquanim. There's a lot of Naked Expand to work from, too, actually. Aquanim had switched over to Naked Expansion. After the first few, they realized, okay, Dorkiak's not moving out. Let's just Naked Expand. That's just a thing to do. And Dorkiak, once again, I don't know what Dorkiak is... I've got to look up Dorkiak's history. I think they might be either a Teams player or an FFA player. They are playing like this is FFA. More than like this is Teams. I find it very surprising. It's very defensive play. And it's probably one of the reasons they probably have high elo is because it's difficult when you're starting out. You get really used to just pounding your forces into your opponent's base. It's hard to get used to the idea that you might want to actually hang back a bit, use artillery to fight against defenses. So building up defenses like this you can force your opponent, if they're not particularly good, to just run into them. They're not used to it, necessarily. So they'll just run into all these all these defenses and have no way around them. But Aquanim knows what they're doing. They can easily get around this. They've And they've just done so. Like This is probably the killing blow right here. These Glaives being the only possible saving grace. Dorkiak pumping everything they have into building these up. But even then, the band count is just... I think it's just too high. Especially with the Glaives coming in one at a time. I mean, even if the bandits die, this is pretty much Dorkiak's entire economy. Like, this is it. Bit of a bad focus on the chainsaw, but otherwise, yeah, this is Dorkiak's economy. If they can take it out, and Aquanim focusing instead on production, I don't think they quite realize just how much Dorkiak is relying entirely on this corner. I think if they realized that, they would have probably just gone straight in, taken out all the wind generators, taken out all the metal extractors, and that would have been it. And the wind generators, good target, good to get rid of those. That's... I think the entirety of the power infrastructure that Dorkiak has, come to think of it, they're really just living on this, and they're, they have no overdrive going here. At all. Like, this pylon, unfortunately we can't see it because of that bug I just identified the cause of, finally. But yeah, this connected here, connected here, which is, I think, connected to nothing. Like, these two wind generators are it. Otherwise, no. I'm well, surprised Akinem is going really head-on into these defenses. I mean, their bandits are able to take them out, but that's a, a that's a loss. On the other hand, we have round two, right, or wave two, rather, right behind them. And that's not going to have as big of a problem. Dorkiak going for one last ditch attempt to break out of this. Trying to take out all these bandits. The glaives are not doing the right enough. I mean, glaives are weaker than bandits. One to one. By cost, about the same, but one to one, no, they are not. And I think Dorkiak is going to throw in the towel after losing those glaives. Like, these glaives are all going to... There's four glaives. There's a couple glaives. A few glaives behind them. It's eight glaives now. Running into the main base. Running right into a massive pack of bandits. And that is going to be it. I think that, yeah, the Lotus will take out the last stragglers to get through. And the remaining bandits defending against this. That is pretty much going to be it. I think Dorkiak has no other options. Last few glaives. Are they going to do anything? No, they are not. And now I think Akinos is going to push in. Aquanum has an easy path along the south. They've already carved out. They don't really have a path along the north. They didn't manage to break that too much, but these planets could easily just go in here, and that would be that would be pretty much game. And now Aquanum, as we can see, has taken everything. Realizing, yeah, I can just take everything. I don't have to worry about it. Dorkiak is not expanding. I can just go. Hey, forget it. I'll just go. And so they have, and actually getting a scorpion as well. Okay, at this point, Aquanum is just toying with Dorkiak. They don't even want to win. They're just they're just playing with them. Let's just speed this up until 
how can decides to actually win. Because I'm sure most of you are kind of thinking, okay, yeah, whatever, this is a foregone conclusion. I mean, Dorkiak is losing a lot of glaives to these bandits. The bandits are barely dying. Completely free glaive kills right there with those defenders, and that is basically it. Nice spread on those bombers, too. I'm glad to see that. I think it was probably just alt the area attack, though. It's not quite spread on all the metal extractors. It's something I generally recommend doing is select the bombers, hit a metal extract, like A or F click, whichever you have it set to, whatever you have the attack ground set to. On the metal extractor, deselect one with right click, select the next metal extractor, same thing, just repeat for all the metal extractors, and with like a dozen bombers, if they don't have enough air defenses, you can wipe out their entire metal infrastructure right away. Like, add a stroke. Their standing metal infrastructure. Not their reclaim, of course. Not their commander, I suppose. But all their metal extractors. Yeah, at this point, Aquadim... I think they're just waiting for the Scorpion? Yep, yeah, they have the Scorpion have a Val Vindicator to pull it into the base. There we go. Picks it up. And that is pretty much going to be it. That Vindicator is essentially... What's happening in this game. That is going to be it. And with the Vindicator, we have the Scorpion running in to finish this whole thing off. Dropping off right by the bandits. Now we should see it move in. Is it going to do it? I don't know. It looks like it might. Oh, another set of... Oh, size. Nice. So a handful of sides come in here while at the same time... Scorpion's moving in. The scythes are getting chased down, but the scorpion moving in. Let's slow this down a bit. Get back to normal speed. But the scythes getting spotted out right next to the bandits. The scorpion not quite revealing itself. Dorky X scythes are taking a lot of damage. I don't see them doing anything from this point on. Yeah, they got caught out. A little unfortunate. Managed to get a bit of damage, but at this point, it's there's way too much that Aquinum has. And a, a wolverine for good measure. And it doesn't even kill them all. Wow, okay. At any rate, yeah, there's a bandit on an intercept path. That's going to finish it. Scorpion still hasn't revealed itself, though. It's about to move out to do so. Dorkiak paying very close attention to this scythe, though. You see their cursor's right there. They want to make sure that scythe does not die, and... Well, no guarantees. And that reveals the scorpion. The scorpion takes out the stardust. Well, it stuns out the stardust, but that's... Yeah, it's dead. And the scythe getting one hit in before dying. Now the scorpion. That's that's the real story. What happens with this scorpion? Because that scorpion is pretty much going to be finishing off this game. Running to the base, taking it out. This this game is pretty much over though. I mean, I am still going to speed it up though. Speed of destruction of the scorpion because really this is a foregone conclusion. And the wyvern, why not? Take it, bombing out the chainsaw to finish that off. And that's basically game. And then, oh yeah, for good measure, the Vindicator running in, because why not? And now with the bandits coming in, that is going to finish it. Bandits move in for the final blow, and Dorkiak throws in the towel. Awesome. Hope you enjoyed that. That was going to be first game for tonight. Next game will be up in a couple of minutes. It will be slightly more even. Hokomoko versus Shady Bear on Trojan Hills, my favorite map. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.